the file any? Sure, I'm sure. Hey, maybe she committed suicide, Inspector, eh? Huh? Say, you might be right. Come on, let's break down the door. Yeah. Harder, Rollins, harder. This should do it. That's it. Come on, let's go in quick. I don't smell no gas. Where's the light switch? Don't ask me. I'm a stranger here myself. Hey, hold it. Somebody's over there crying. Here's the light switch. Hey, miss. You, uh, Joan Thompson? Joan? Joan Thompson? Joan? Are you Joan Thompson? Are you the cigarette girl on the boulevard left? Yes. You wanted for the murder of Henry Bryson? No. You left the no. club with him tonight, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. You took him home in your car, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, we found Bryson's body on a country road a couple of hours ago. There are blood stains in your car. Explain that. All right. Oh, I killed him. I did it. I did it. That's better. What did you do with the gun? I gave it. You gave it to somebody? Who? Oh, Dave. Look around. See what you can find, Rollins. Yeah, I'm looking, Inspector. What did you do with that gun, Miss Thompson? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Inspector. Here's a telephone number that may mean something. Look, right here on the top of this pad. Let's have a look. Well, uh, I'll say it means something. You know that number, Inspector, hey? Know it. I could dial it in my sleep. That phone number is Boston Blackie's. <laughs> Now meet Richard Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friends. <laughs> Look, Miss Thompson, crying isn't going to do you any good. You're going to answer my question if it takes forever. I don't care anything I know. I killed Henry Bright and I admit it. But where's the gun? <laughs> Yeah, but when and for how long and why was he here? I... Oh, please, leave me alone. Did you give Blackie your gun? I don't remember. Well, start remembering. Did you give your gun to Blackie? Yes, I gave it to him. Okay, Miss Thompson, that's all I wanted to know. Give me a hand, Rollins, for taking this girl to headquarters. Okay, lady, let's go. Hey, Inspector, this now don't look too good, huh? Okay, so maybe she doesn't feel well. Maybe she needs a doctor. And maybe Blackie won't feel well either when he finds out he's going to need a lawyer. Inspector Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. Blackie, I've been looking for you. So I hear. That's why I called. Yeah? Well, how does it feel to be a murder suspect? Completely natural. Now what have I done? Made a fool out of yourself. You won't be able to wisecrack your way out of this one, Blanky. I'm pinning this on you. Faraday, you have trouble pinning your badge on yourself. Okay, be a smart aleck if you want to. But why'd you do it, Blanky? Why did I do it? I don't even know what I've done. You're always so shy about telling me those things. You took Joan Thompson's gun. Oh, that? Yeah, that. The Thompson girl admits she killed Henry Bryson. Now, why did you have to get mixed up in it by taking her gun? Now you're an accessory after the fact. And you're a cop after the accessory. The cycle's complete. All right, Blanky. I've given you a chance to square yourself. You won't? So I'm coming to get you. Oh, come on. It'll be nice seeing you again. Blanky, listen to me. Stop clowning for once and tell me. Why did you do it? It's so simple. Maybe after a few translations of the baby talk, even you can understand it. This Joan Thompson used to be Mary Wesley's best friend. Since when does knowing Mary Wesley make an angel out of anybody? Mary Wesley's qualities are catching. Uh, wait a minute, Barney. Fold your wings, Mary. They're fluttering. Can. When they're unfolded like this, they dust the walls so nicely. <laughs> Frankie, is that Miss Wesley with you now? And you ought to see her, Faraday. She looks lovely. Well, maybe I will see her. Behind bars with you. She could be mixed up in this, too, you know. Look, Faraday, Mary didn't send me up there to take the gun away from the Thompson girl. I did that on my own. I don't trust your ballistics department. By the way, what caliber bullet killed Henry Brightson? None of your business. Well, I'm going to make it mine to keep you in business. So long, Faraday. When I have your killer, I'll deliver him to you all wrapped up. Blackie, you listen to me, Frank. Well, times certainly haven't changed, Mary. Neither has Faraday. He thinks I had something to do with Henry Brightson's murder. Oh, Blackie, it's all my fault for calling you. But when Joan called me, I didn't know who else to turn to. 
If you never know who else to turn to, that's fine with me. Yes, but now you're in trouble. Is that unusual? No, but I certainly wish it were. Oh, Blackie, what are we going to do? Prove Joan Thompson didn't kill Henry Brightson. But how? She admits she killed him. I think she's admitting that to cover up somebody. Why, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Because you're, because you're not a genius called Boston Blackie. Oh, well, genius, <laughs> what now? Now I think we'll go out and make a night of it. A night of what? Oh, festivities at the Boulevard Club, where your friend Joan Thompson works. But, but why do we go there? To see if we can pick up a couple of clues before Faraday picks up a couple of us. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Williams is completely in my power. Hypnotized. Blackie, is he a fake? The rest of the Boulevard Club is phony enough, Mary, but I think the floor show is legitimate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you will remember that before the subject was hypnotized, he could not correctly add... 27 and 47. Who can? Now, while he's hypnotized, I will give the subject three figures to add. And his subconscious mind will calculate the answers with the speed of machinery. If this works, I should have been hypnotized in school. Won't you? Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Williams. 257. 349. 581. Add those numbers together and give me the answer. 1,187. Ladies and gentlemen, add those figures yourself and you'll see that the answer is correct. Blackie, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still working on oh, it. Oh, darling, don't write on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, I think our subject should wake up. Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. Wake up. Wake up. Mm. Oh. Yeah, sure. Now, Mr. Williams, give me the correct sum of 257, 349, and 581. Quickly. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> this man would get through life better if you were hypnotized. Me <laughs> too. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you, Mr. Williams. You've been a good sport. Oh, shucks. Isn't that the end of the floor show? Seems to be. Blackie, was that man look really on the level? I don't know. Well, um, here, here comes that Mr. Williams. Let's ask him about it, huh? All right. Say, uh, Williams. You hold me? Uh, yes, have you got a minute? Uh, I'm awful sorry. I, I've got an awful memory for names and faces. I, I don't think I remember... Oh, you don't know us, Mr. Williams, but uh, uh, we'd like to ask you what it was like to be hypnotized. Were you really hypnotized? I'm afraid I was. Then there's really something to it, huh? Well, I'm not a professional stooge, that you're thinking. I'm just a paying guest, same as you. You added those figures so quickly. Uh, aren't you good with numbers normally? Terrible. I took math in high school for three years and just got by. <laughs> I can hardly add two and two. Well, how is it that you could add under hypnosis, then? I have to ask a psychologist about that. Uh, excuse me, please. I got people waiting at my table. Good night. Well, thanks for coming over. Well, that mentalist is really on the level, then, isn't he, Blackie? Yes, I suppose there is a scientific explanation for hypnosis. It's part of the applied psychology course at colleges. Oh, golly, I think we better watch the clock. It's getting late, darling. Oh, all right. There's a waiter. Waiter! I do it, sir. Um, Blackie, why don't you ask the waiter a few questions about Henry Blackson? What? And get thrown out? Mary, in places like this, the only question to ask is, how much is the check? Oh. Now, if the waiter mentions Brightson first, that's different. Then I could probably... Shh, here he comes. You want something, sir? There's the check, please. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. Enjoy the floor show? Very much. Almost had a little unscheduled show here last night. Our cigarette girl killed Henry Bison. You read about it? Yes, we did. She was exciting. Police all over the place. Say, uh, <laughs> tell me, uh, yes? did the place, uh, did they ever find the man Brightson came in with last night? I don't know when not. Dr. James Harris does not have to hide from anybody. He left a long time before Brightson did. Why would the police think Dr. Harris killed Bison? Well, I don't know that they do. Uh, say, uh, how did that cigarette girl, um, uh, what's her name, Joan Thompson, uh, uh, how did she get mixed up with Brightson? Well, when Brightson was about to... Uh, don't ask questions yet, though, because we do not know the answers. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, sir, but we have a policy here never to talk about our customers. Important people come here, and it is not right. I'm sorry I asked. That's okay. Here, this should take care of the check. Thank you, sir. I'll be right back. Never mind. Keep it. Thank you. 
Blackie. What's the matter, Mary? You look surprised. How did you know Bryson came in with someone else? I didn't. It's just a shot in the dark. Well, let's stay here until they turn out the lights, and maybe you can shoot for the answer to everything. Oh, no. We're getting out of here. Why? See that man over there? He's Edwards, the boss of this joint. Oh, he looks like the boss of a chain gang. Why not? He used to be a member of one. Look at those mugs he's talking to. And look at them. Look at us. I think they're going to close in for a better rug, too. That waiter must have told them that I was asking questions. Oh, Blackie, and those questions didn't do you any good either, did they? I know it. No, come on. I'm going to see Joan in jail to try and put the pieces of this puzzle together before Edwards and his pals get the notion that we ought to be taken apart. <laughs> There's a doctor to see you, Miss Thompson. A doctor? I don't want a doctor. A friend of yours asked me to see you, Miss Thompson. Uh, you want me to come in a cell with you, Doc? She's kind of violent, this one. No, thank you, officer. I'll be all right. Okay. There you are, Doc. Thank you. I'll just lock this door. You tell me when you're through, I'll let you out, eh? Uh, thank you, I will, yes. Uh, just sit. Where you are, Miss Thompson? I tell you, I don't want a doctor. Just sit quietly, Miss Thompson. I don't need a doctor. I hope not, Joan, because I'm no doctor. What? But I'm what the doctor ordered, Boston Blackie. Blackie? Blackie, I gave you the gun. What else do you want? Shh. The police were after me, too. That's the reason for the whiskers in my doctor's kit. I don't understand. Why are you here? To help you. Nobody can help me. Look, Joan, I've just come from the Boulevard Club. Something's wrong there. Now... Before you left last night, did anyone force you to do anything at all? No. No, when I got through, I got my hat and my usual cup of coffee and left. You're covering up for somebody, Joan. No. Who? Who killed Henry Bites? I did. Joan, will you stop no. lying? Who's forcing you to say it? I killed Henry Bites and I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. I killed him. I it. Oh, leave me alone. Joan, don't do this to me. I've hidden your gun because I thought you were innocent. Now tell me the truth, will you? Go away. I killed Henry Bryson, I admit it. I killed him with more you want All right, Joan. If there's nothing more you can say, there's nothing more I can do. Joan Thompson, cigarette girl in the Boulevard Club friend of Mary Wesley has confessed to the murder of Henry Brightson, but Blackie and Mary, convinced she is merely covering up for the real killer, try to help her, but learn only that Brightson came to the club with a Dr. Harris, left with Joan Thompson, was later found dead. Blackie's last hope of proving Joan's innocence died later, when in jail, Joan insisted she did kill Brightson. As we return to our story, Blackie's driving Mary to his apartment to pick up the murder gun. Blackie, what are you thinking? A whole catalog of things, Mary. What's on page one? I've never been faced with anything like this before. I know I'm licked. If Joan killed Bryson, she killed him, and that's that. Page two? I still want to do something for her, but I don't know what. Well, first you're going to do something for yourself. You're going to get that gun out of your apartment. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. And send it to Faraday. Then what? Then I don't know what. Well, here's my street. Blackie, is that a police car in front of your apartment house? It's worse than that. It's Faraday's private cruiser. Oh. We're getting out of here. Hey, hey, keep all four wheels on the ground, please. Phew. Sorry, oh. Mary, but that was Faraday himself on the sidewalk, Sorry. and I I know what he's after. You, of course. First, Joan Thompson's gun in my apartment. His men are probably looking for it right now. Will they find it? I don't think so. But this means we have to find something ourselves. What? Well... Remember that waiter at the Boulevard Club said Brightson arrived with a Dr. James Harris? Yes. Dr. Harris is a well-known drug specialist. He could tell me something important. What? Well, the real reason he left the club before Brightson did. That's one thing he could tell me. And what's another thing? Whether or not Joan Thompson can be under the influence of a drug that makes her believe she committed murder. And if he gives you that information, what do you have? A prescription for murder to be filled at the nearest police station. Yes, Blackie, I know Harry Brightson's dead. 
had a visit from Inspector Faraday with the police just a little while ago. Well, Faraday's really making an effort to earn his pay these days. But I'm sure there are a couple of questions he didn't ask you, Dr. Harris. Yes? You came to the club with Brightson last night. Why didn't you leave with him? Why, uh, I had an emergency call. I can check on that, you know. Well, well, all right, then. Brightson and I went to the Boulevard Club for a little private game with the owner, Jim Edwards. I dropped out. Because you ran out of money? No. I left because that game wasn't on the level. And I knew it. Who was crooked? Brightson. I told him so and left. Then what did you do? I came straight home. Got a gun, went back to the Boulevard Club, waited for Brightson to come out, followed him, then killed him. Now, look here. I, I didn't kill Brightson, I tell you. I... Yes, I know that's what you tell me. You can't drag me into this. You, you can't. All I want to do is drag the truth out of you. But I've told you the whole truth. All right. Let's forget the possibility that you might have killed Brightson for the moment. Aren't you a specialist in drugs? Mm-hmm. So what? Is there a drug that would make Joan Thompson, the cigarette girl, believe she killed Brightson? No. Drugs don't make people think they've done something they haven't done. Under the influence of drugs, people do forget, though. In other words, drugs don't enter into this at all. Being drugged would not make her confess to something she didn't do. I'll stake my reputation on that. Those are pretty high stakes, Dr. Harris. Let's just hope that before this is over, you don't have to pull them up. Mary, this is Blackie. I've just seen Dr. Harris, and drugs are out. Oh, dear. But something else is in, and if my hunch is right, I'm in, too. What do you mean? Question. Why did Brightson leave the club in Jones' car when his own was parked in a lot outside the club? Answer. His car broke down. Oh, Blackie, Joan told us that. Yes, but we're going to have a look at that car of his, because if it didn't break down, it's going to break up this case. Here's Bryson's car in the parking lot, apparently right where he left it. How will you know whether or not there's something wrong with it? You're no mechanic. <laughs> well, I can try to be one, can I? Yes, we'll have a look under the hood. That's where mechanics always start. Why aren't you observing? Mm. What do you see in there? Oh, come over. and You can look at it, too. It's an engine. You don't say. Mm-hmm. Eight cylinders. That bad? <laughs> you're a big help. Well, you're the one that's pretending to be a mechanic. Uh-oh. See something? See those marks on the top of the engine block? Uh, yeah, yeah, the little lines in the grease. Those were made when the contact wires of the spark plugs were removed. Well, yes, but couldn't they have just slipped off? All of them at once? No, Pat. Somebody was kidding around with this engine. Only he wasn't kidding. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you're the same waiter we had here last night. How nice. I'm glad you liked the Boulevard Club enough to come back the second night. Oh, yes, we enjoyed it last night. Especially the floor show. Oh, I hope you have not come to see the mentally. As a matter of fact, we have. We hope we might be able to volunteer as subjects. I'm awfully sorry, sir. He is not here any longer. Oh, we missed him. But we have a new act that is excellent. I'm sure you will like it. Yes, I'm sure we will. Now, what would you like for dinner this evening? We haven't decided yet. Uh, could you give us a few more minutes? Of course. All the time you want, sir. All the time you want. Well, Blackie, there goes your theory. And here I go to the telephone. What for? To call Faraday. Oh, Blackie, a little setback isn't going to make you give up, is it? No, Mary. A little information is going to make me give out. <laughs> Inspector, this is Blackie. Where are you, Blackie? I've been looking all over town for you. Well, thanks for the flattery, Inspector, but I don't need it right now. I don't need you at any time, Blackie, but I'm coming to get you. Uh, don't bother with me, Faraday. You have another body on your hands if you can find it. I've already found it. And guess who it is? The hypnotist at the Boulevard Club. Oh, so you killed him, too? I didn't kill him, either. Yeah? Then how did you know he was dead? I have a sixth sense. And yeah, so does a horse. 
Then if you had any horse sense, you'd know who killed Wilner and why. Okay, Sea Biscuit. Who did kill the mentalist? Okay, also ran the same guy who killed Brightson. What kind of an answer is that? The right one. Mikey, you know what I'm going to do? Sure, exactly what I tell you to do. First, get a doctor for Joan Thompson. She's been drugged and hypnotized. Get her out of it, and she'll stop insisting she killed Brightson. Yeah? Now, what are you going to do? What I always do, Faraday. Get you your killer. <laughs> You want to do business with me, Blackie? That's right, Edwards. I have offers from people every day who want to buy into this club of mine. I oh. don't accept it. Oh, I'm not interested in your club, Edwards. Uh, but I am interested in your activities. Meaning what? I think you killed Henry Brightson. I'm not interested in what you think. I also think you killed Wilner, the hypnotist. I'm still not interested. I also think your gun killed them both. Oh, you do? Don't reach for your gun, Edwards. I need only one, and mine's quite handy. You're very fast on the draw. You're very slow on the take. I'm accusing you of two murders, and you don't seem the least bit concerned. Uh, by the way, uh, hand over that gun, will you? I have a permit for this pistol. But the permit doesn't say that you can kill with it. Hand it over. I want to look at it. All right, here. Now you can sit down and make yourself comfortable. Because what I'm going to say to you will make you uncomfortable. That gun of mine did not kill Brightson. It did not kill Wilner. Hasn't been fired in months. I can tell that by looking at it. Are you satisfied? Yeah. Yeah. You can have it now. Now, will you be so kind as to put your gun away? Of course. Well, that been him? Yes, much. Now, Edwards, I'm not going to ask you if you killed Brightson and Wilner. I'm going to tell you you did, and why. Can you? Just listen. Brightson caught you cheating at cards and threatened to go to the police. You couldn't afford that. You fixed his car so it wouldn't run and sent him home in Joan Thompson's car. Then Joan Thompson was the last to see him alive, so she must have killed him. Joan Thompson was drugged when she had her usual cup of coffee before leaving the club. And you went along with her until the drug took effect. Then stopped the car, shot Brightson. Joan Thompson admits she killed Brightson. Of course. Under hypnosis, she would admit anything. After killing Brightson, you brought Joan back here, had Wilner hypnotize her and impress on her subconscious that she had killed Brightson. You, uh, can prove that? You helped prove it yourself by killing Wilner so he could never blackmail you. The final proof will come when a doctor tells the police that Joan Thompson is been both drugged and hypnotized ever since she was found in the room. Don't move, Blackie. I wouldn't give orders if I were you, Edwards. Then I'll let my gun speak for me. It speaks sort of softly, doesn't it? Stay back, Blackie. My gun's just missing. When I'll it's say it's missing, Edwards. It's missing its bullets. What? I took them out when I pretended to look at you again. Why, you dirty... Oh, no, Edwards. Please, don't call me names. It isn't fair. Because from now on, all anybody will be able to call you is a number. <laughs> Everything checked, Mary. The police found out that our friend Joan had been drugged. And Joan was made to believe she killed Brightson because she was hypnotized. I still can't believe it. Look into my eyes. What? You are going to sleep. Oh. Look into my eyes. Yes? Now put your arms around me. Yes. Now lift your face up to mine. I... This? And now? Now? This. <laughs> Do you think I'm hypnotized? Well, maybe you aren't. But I am. Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> 